Hello and welcome to the webinar of Fit Electronic ISOs. My name is Eleni Stark and I will moderate the webinar today. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our webinar. Our speaker today is our project manager Roland Kratz. He will hold today's webinar on negative output voltage with an inverting bug boost and also answer your questions. Before we start the webinar, I would, point, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during the webinar today. This means that you can't ask us questions via microphone during the webinar. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us questions during the webinar at any time via the chat function. You'll find the chat function in the webinar control panel. The webinar will be about 30 minutes long. The chat questions will then be answered in a question answer session following the webinar. There are 15 minutes in addition scheduled for this. If we are unable to answer all your questions within these 15 minutes, please email us at isis-webinar at we-online.com. We will try to answer all your questions promptly. At the end of the webinar, you will be asked to participate in a feedback survey. We would be pleased if you take the time to fill out the survey and help us to optimize our webinars. The link to the recording of today's webinar, as well as the presentation, will be sent to you in a separate email one day after the webinar. You can also watch the recording of today's webinar one day later on our website, under the navigation point Webinars, or on our Wood Electronic YouTube channel. Now I'm giving directly to our speaker Roland Kratz and I wish you an exciting webinar. So, welcome to the webinar Negative Output Voltage with Inverting Bug Boost. With an inverting bug boost, we can create a negative voltage from a positive supply voltage. The absolute value of the negative voltage can be higher or lower than the supply voltage. So, the name Inverting Bug Boost describes its function very good. In the next 30 minutes, we will have a deeper look into the inverting bug boost topology. The target of this webinar is to show that a bug regulator can be used to create an inverting bug boost and which important considerations we should take care about. This webinar will be recorded and you can watch it afterwards if there is any point you want to see again. We will send you the link to the video in the next day. So the agenda for today is typical inverting bug boost in theory and practical inverting bug boost, the, the difference between theory and reality, and at least a bug regulator as inverting bug boost. So here we have a schematic of an inverting bug boost. I applied, for example, 24 volt input voltage, and I want to generate a 12 volt minus output voltage. So this schematic is typically found in books when, um, and we now have a look into the on and off phases. Before we go to the on and off phase, we calculate the duty cycle. In our example, it's 33% of on time. So you will see it here. We have an on phase of one third of the time and the off phase two thirds of the whole time of the switching cycle. When we look at the output, we see a load of 12 ohms. The output voltage is 12 volt. This means we have one ampere load. During the on phase, we see no 
a connection between the input and the output. This means during one third of the time, during the on phase, the output capacitor has to supply the load. The output power is continuously 12 watts, either in the on time or in the off time. With an inverting bug boost with 100% efficiency, we have also a constant input power of 12 watts all the time. If we look on the off phase, on the output, also here we have continuously 12 watt and the energy which is previously stored in the inductor is now released to supply the load over two thirds of the time. And you see here a charging current of the output capacitor also two thirds of the time. Half an amp and 12 volt means six watt, but the time is two thirds of the time, which means six watt by two is equal to the 12 watt, which is used to supply the output load uh, in one third of the time during the on phase. Continuously 12 watt at the output means we have to store energy into the inductor at the on time, which is three times higher than the output load, the output power. So we need during on phase, we have to charge 36 watt into the inductor. The input voltage is 24 volts. This means the inductor current, the average inductor current for charging is must be 1.5 amps. And the 12 watt continuous input power, we see we have the 24 volt and the half an amp continuously is almost a good DC current. And added during on time, there is an average of one amp coming out of the output capacitor and these both currents in sum is the 1.5 amps of the inductor. During the release phase, the off phase, the output voltage forces its voltage across the inductor. It has different direction, 180 degree, uh, different than during on phase. The inductor moves its current in the same direction to release the energy in the inductor. The current moves downwards, the voltage arrow shows upwards. This means the inductor now is a supply. During on phase, the inductor acts as a load. Now it acts as a supply. So the 36 watt are released now in two thirds of the time. This means I have the 0 0.5 amps, 12 volt, it's six watt, but in two thirds of the time, it's 12 watts at the same power uh, which is used before in the on phase to supply the load. So this capacitor supplies the load. He loses 12 watts in one third of the time. And in two thirds of the time, it's recharged also with the 12 watts. So the energy balance is valid. And during off phase, the input current of constantly half an amp charges the input cap before, during on phase, there was a current of one amp charging the inductor. 
for one third of the time, it's 24 watts in sum. And during off phase, it's charged with 12 watts, but two thirds of the time in sum 24 watts. So we see all capacitors are charged and decharged with the same amount of power. Now we see a visualization of these energy balance. The input power is always constant 12 watt. The output power is the same. It's valid only 400% efficiency. And if we look at the inductor, in one third means the, off, the on time, we must store 36 watts in the inductor. And on the off time, we release these 36 watt in double the time, in two thirds. This means we have here only 18 watts. While the big rectangles, the two big rectangles, means this is the power for the resistive load. And the small areas here are the 6 watts with, where the output capacitor is charged over two thirds of the time. In sum, it means uh, 12 watts in one third of the time, as you saw in the on phase where the output cap delivers the whole energy to the load. And before we saw um, inverting bug boost in theory, now we have a real inverting bug boost and we see there is a big difference. We have a capacitor now in between. So before, uh, before the switch, the upper switch was closed and the inductor is tied to the 24 volt and the right part, the output part, which is this part, was separated from the input part. Now we have a capacitor inside. It's a real physical capacitor which is located on the PCB. We see afterwards what it is. And during off phase on this functional diagram, it's located on the um, near the input of the off phase, which separates uh, for DC current, the input from the inductor. The big difference now between theory and reality is that if the switch closes here and the DC current flows through the inductor and also, also the AC current from C1 flows into the inductor, also C3 supplies a current which runs down the inductor and charges the inductor and also charges the output capacitor. So in theory, there is no connection between input and output. So it's not a forward converter. And in reality, we have during on phase a directly charging or partially charging of the output capacitor through the on phase, which is different to the reality. And during off phase, the charging current, so C3, has to be charged also again because before it supplied energy to the inductor. The charging current of C3 discharges the inductor and discharges also the output capacitor. 
So these are the big differences between reality and theory. And when we go from the functional um, schematic to a real schematic where we see the capacitor C3, so we see it here. This capacitor is always connected to the upper input voltage, in this case 24 volt, and always connected to the lowest voltage in the system. This is, in this example, minus 12 volts. So what is this for a capacitant which changes the theory? We see in the next page. So now we see an inverting buck boost in a schematic which is drawn in many books. And now I redraw the schematic that it looks different, but the function is still the same. It's only a redrawing of the schematic. And now it looks like this. We have the 24 volt line, we have the ground line, and we have the minus 12 volt line. So from top to the bottom, the voltage levels are lower. And what is added now? It's a buck regulator IC. So we need some integrated circuit which, which, which pushes the switch and also with do the regulation. The output voltage of 12 volt, we want to keep it constant. So we need at the output cap a resistor divider for sure and give the feedback to the buck regulator's feedback node. Based on this information at the feedback, the switch, the switch's duty cycle, so the on time is bigger or smaller, it's made bigger or smaller uh, that the output voltage of 12 volt stays constant. For example, if the 1 amps of the load in our example increases, the buck regulator IC increases also the duty cycle that the 12 volt keep constant. So, and every buck regulator IC or every other IC needs a capacitor close to its uh, power supply pins that it works properly. Probably, if this C3 is not in the circuit, the buck regulator IC will take the pulsing current from C1 in series with C2. But in a physical layout, the leads are longer than a couple of millimeters and you will add several nano henrys into the lines which uh, uh, makes uh, the switching node for example with a rectangle waveform a little bit um, it decreases the rise rate for example and these inductances also are radiated as uh, emi So this is why uh, this capacitor is always necessary, which is not mentioned in the theory. And here we see again the inverting buck boost schematic, which is uh, a real inverting buck boost. And now we have a really interesting change in the schematic. If I use if I take these two nodes which are marked and swap these nodes then automatically the inductor and diode exchanges its places. Also C2 rotates by 180 degree also uh, the voltage points down now and the ground goes up and also C3 and C1 exchanges its places. No change in the function, only in the drawing of the schematic. 
and the result is this. So drawn in black and in red, all this schematic is an inverting bug boost and the parts which are drawn in black is a bug regulator. So now we see with a bug regulator we can create very easy an inverting bug boost. Normally on a bug regulator at the point 3C at the capacitor C3 we normally apply the input voltage and at C2 we normally have the output voltage. But in this case at a bug regulator we do not use the regular input of the bug regulator. We take the input voltage and apply the positive pin to the input capacitor and the ground of the 24 volt directly to the output capacitor. So the 24 volt has also uh, the ground. By connecting the ground to the output of the bug regulator, the output is also connected automatically to the ground of your PCB of your application. This means you will have the 12 volt minus. So you have suc successfully created a negative output voltage of a positive input voltage. So we have some considerations. For example, the, the designer has 24 volts and needs minus 12 volt with one amp. Can we use a bug regulator with nominal input voltage of 24 volt and max output current of 1 amp? Yeah, for sure not. Things are not as uh, easy. The average inductor current is higher than the output current. This is very important. In our case, with 100% efficiency, we have an, uh, an inductor current of 1.5 amps and an output current of 1 amp. So we cannot use a 1 amp buck regulator for this. And with, for example, 85% efficiency, the duty cycle changes and also the inductor current increases to 1.64 amps. And we have only 1 amp output current. And also, as we saw before, the IC, the back, regu back regulator IC is located here and the C3 is the capacitor for this back regulator. So we have here 24 volts plus these 12 volts is equal to this voltage. This means 36 volt. With an inverting back boost, the IC must not only be um, chosen by the input voltage of 24 volt, it is the sum of the 24 volts and the absolute value of the minus 12 volts. So it's 36 volt. So we cannot use a bug regulator with only 24 volts input. So as a conclusion, for 24 input voltage and minus 12 output voltage, 1 amp, we need a 36 volt 2 amps bug regulator. And for sure, a little bit safety margin, 36 volt, uh, the nearest rail is 42 volt here in this case. And what about the startup phase? Because, for example, here is 5 volt. It's connected to the input cap of a bug regulator. It's connected to the output cap of the bug regulator. If we only look at the capacitors, we have the capacitor uh, um, for the IC. And we have the output capacitor. So we can have a mesh rule, for example, this 5 volt and this 2.5 volt, for example, and 2.5 volt uh, in sum is 5 volt. So maybe on C3 or C2, 
uh, we have the same voltage, for example. So we need to have an IC which starts at least 2.5 volt. But every buck regulator, um, independent of asynchronous or synchronous buck regulator, has a diet inside, a real diet or the body diet of the MOSFET. So if we apply the 5 volts, then the input cap of the inverting buck boost is charged and also this capacitor is charged and the output capacitor is bypassed by the inner diode and the copper windings of the um, inductor. There will be a state where this voltage of the capacitance, the capacitor reaches more than 4 volt while this current is very low, maybe 10, 20 milliamps or 1, 2 milliamps, while the flux voltage is maybe 200, 300, 400 millivolts and in the inductor it's, let's say, zero. So this means in a buck regulator, because of this diode, the biggest part of the input voltage is also across C3. So we need an IC inside this buck regulator which starts safely at 4 volt. If already started and the IC closes this switch, then the negative output voltage starts to establish. And this line, previously um, 4 volt, Oh, sorry, previously uh, a couple of hundred volts moves down to the requested voltage, for example, minus 5 volt output voltage. So this means also the 4 volts here increases to 10 volts because we have here the 5 volts and the 5 volts and the output. This means we have here across the C3 capacitor 10 volts. Okay, we are ready with this short webinar. So thank you for your attention. And if you need more information, we have an inverting bug boost with magic power modules application note on our website, including more formulas for sure if you want it. And you have the direct link here also in the um, link you will receive. You can send emails to powermodules at we-online.com or you can ask your sales representative. So if you now have any questions, uh, we, I can answer the questions you put into the checkbox, chat box. Die Stummschaltung ist aktiviert. Die Stummschaltung ist aufgehoben. So, we have only two questions. One question is, uh, can the buck regulator start with negative output voltage with load already attached? Yes, this is no problem because I do not know any um, switch regulator which starts only with no load. So for sure, uh, a buck regulator in buck regulator mode or in inverting buck boost mode can start with a load attached. And the second question is, can I use every buck regulator IC for creating negative output voltage? Uh, yes, you can use every buck regulator on the market uh, to create a buck regulator or to create an inverting buck boost. As you saw in the webinar, it's really easy to create an inverted buck boost out of a buck regulator by only adding one capacitor and applying the input voltage at different points. 
So as there are no more questions, I would like to thank I would like to thank you for your participation in the webinar and hopefully we see you in the next webinar. Thank you and goodbye.